There was once a man and a woman who had wanted to have a child for a long, long time. And at last, their wish was going to be granted. Oh, they were so happy that all they wanted to do was hold hands and smile. And look out of the window at the beautiful countryside. Oh, I'm so happy, Cottontail, she said. So am I, Wobbly Bottom. <laughs> Through the window, they could see into a wonderful garden next door, full of the most fantastic flowers and fruit and veg, and where, strangely, it seemed to be forever spring. But this garden belonged to pretty much the worst sort of neighbour you could possibly have. She was a witch. <laughs> powerful and incredibly smelly witch who was dreaded by all the world. Now, the vegetable garden was planted with very special lettuces that clever people who know about such things know are called Rapunzel. And when the wife saw these lettuces, mmm, mmm, yum, yum, her mouth began to water and she knew she just had to have some for her dinner, mmm, with custard and mustard and the juice from some old tea bags. She was expecting a baby, don't forget. In fact, she grew so desperate for the lettuces, she became pale and sick. And her husband was very worried and, and asked her, what's wrong? Oh, she replied, oh, if I can't eat some of the lettuce from the witch's garden, I, I should just die. So, at twilight, the man clambered over the wall into the witch's garden. Right, he thought. I'll be as quick as I can. I'll, I'll just slip a couple of these lettuces in, in my satchel. <laughs> Stupid old witch won't notice. She's got so many lettuces, she's probably falling over. <laughs> and there, right in front of him, the witch appeared. How dare you descend into my garden like a thief! <laughs> right, you will suffer for this. Oh, no, please, the husband begged. My wife saw your lettuces from, from, from the window, and, and, and she took such a... Took such a get on with it. Come on, tell the story. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so scared. My wife took such a fancy to the lettuces that she would have died if she hadn't got some to eat. <sighs> Expecting a baby, is she? <laughs> the witch said thoughtfully. Well, then, if things are as difficult as you say they are, I will allow you to take as many lettuces as you want. <laughs> On one condition. You must give me your wife's child. No, 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 don't worry. I will care for it as if I was its own mother. <laughs> Albeit a rather unpleasant mother. <laughs> but in his terror, the husband stupidly agreed to everything. And sure enough, when the wife had a baby girl, the witch appeared at the window and said, Right, this is mine, and I'm calling her Rapunzel, just to serve you right. Ha 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 Then she grabbed the baby and vanished. The parents were devastated. But what could they do? So they sat, and they looked out of the window, and cried for 13 years. <laughs> By which time? Unbeknownst to them, Rapunzel had grown into the most beautiful child under the sun. A bit like me. She laughed and she danced around the witch's garden without a care in the world. But, on her 13th birthday, the old witch grabbed Rapunzel, beat her around the head a bit, and said, Right, get this for a birthday present, ugly, and bricked her up in a tower deep in the forest. The tower had no stairs, no door, and only one tiny little window right at the top. And when the witch wanted to go in the tower, she stood beneath the window and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. <laughs> Rapunzel had beautiful long hair, as fine as spun gold. And when she heard the witch's voice, she unfastened the ribbons in her hair, opened the window, and the shining hair tumbled down all the way to the ground. And the witch climbed up by it. Well, this went on in the same way for a year or two. Life became very dull for Rapunzel, as you can imagine. Then, one morning, a prince riding through the forest heard singing that was so wonderful, he pulled up his horse <coughs> and listened. <laughs> it was Rapunzel singing so beautifully. 
This was how she amused herself through all her lonely days. <laughs> the prince immediately fell completely in love and desperately looked for the door to the tower, but there was none to be found. And suddenly, <gasps> he smelled a really horrible, foul, smelly sock sort of smell and, and heard a, <laughs> a squelching, <laughs> burping sort of a noise. It was the witch. Quickly, the prince hid behind a lettuce and watched and watched as the witch came up to the tower and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Oh, God, what a night. <laughs> then Rapunzel let down her shining hair and the witch climbed up by it. <laughs> Hoo hoo, said the prince. So that is how it's done. Ha, huh. I must try that for myself. So that evening, when the witch had gone, which you could tell by not going Bleh! every time you went, <laughs> the prince went to the tower and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Caw, what a night. At first, Rapunzel was very frightened when a man climbed in the window because she'd never seen one before. But when he smiled, it seemed as though summer had broken into the dingy tower. And when the prince asked her to be his wife, she said yes, immediately. <coughs> but how was she to get out of the tower? Prince, she said, listen, you must return to me at sunset for a hundred nights. And each time you must bring a length of silk thread so that I can weave a ladder with it. And when I'm ready, I'll climb out and ride away with you on your horse. Oh, and could you bring me some air freshener as well, please? You know, what with the stinky witch and everything. <laughs> Thanks, Princey. So, the prince visited Rapunzel each evening. And because the witch only ever came in the mornings, their secret was safe. Now, the witch had been getting fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter every day. And one morning, she climbed slowly up Rapunzel's hair, and she was so heavy that she pulled, and she pulled, and she pulled, and she pulled all the way to the top, and in a temper, because her hair had been pulled so much, Rapunzel said, tell me, witch, how come you're so much heavier for me to pull up than the young prince? He never hurts my head. Ooh. Ah, you wicked child. What do I hear you say? I thought I'd separated you from the world, but you've been seeing nasty little princes, have you? I thought there was a horrible, nice smell around here. Ah! You've deceived me! And furious, the witch seized Rapunzel's beautiful hair and snip, snap, off came the lot. The witch was wild with anger. Okay, Baldy, now you'll be really punished. I'm taking you out to a desert to die, yeah, in grief and misery. Ha, ha, ha! That evening, when the prince came and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Caw, what a night. The witch tied Rapunzel's hair to her own straggly grey rat's tail and let it down out of the window. The prince climbed up, but instead of finding his dearest Rapunzel, there was the witch. Ha, 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 she screeched. Surprise! Bosh! And the prince fell backwards out of the window. But luckily, he landed on a bush. Phew. <laughs> Unluckily, it was a thorn bush which scratched out his eyes. And so he wandered around blindly, wondering what was going on, weeping and, and lamenting for his lost Rapunzel. He roamed about for years, until at last, by incredible good fortune, he came to the desert where Rapunzel lived in misery, starving and thirsty with the twins she had given birth to, a boy and a girl. As soon as Rapunzel saw the prince, she threw her arms around his neck and cried for three whole days. And eventually, two of Rapunzel's tears fell on the prince's blind eyes. And he could see again, which made her so happy, she burst into tears again. <laughs> no, no, stop crying, said the prince. There is no need for all this now. I can see again, Rapunzel. So Rapunzel did stop crying, but there was so much water from all her tears, the desert was flooded and the couple were washed all the way home to the prince's kingdom, where they lived in happiness and contentment and uh, dry clothes for a long time after that. And what happened to the witch? <laughs> well, witches can't swim, can they? Yeah, and it serves you right, wherever you are. <laughs>